Along with that, we need to open up to our intuition. Because that's God coming through, talking to you, and giving you directions on how to grow your mind garden. I know a lot of us think, oh, every once in a while I listen to intuition, but I don't do it all the time because I, I know how things have to go. Well, I had an interesting experience several weeks ago about intuition. It was after the major rains had stopped and my front lawn was growing so thick and so tall that I thought, mm, tomorrow I've got to mow that lawn. And the second thought was, yeah, it's going to be a hard job here mowing this lawn because the lawnmower overheats, and certainly with all this grass that I've got now, it's really going to overheat. So I went to bed with determination that we'll somehow get it done tomorrow. It'll take me probably all morning or all afternoon, but we'll get it done. So I woke up the next morning, and the first thing in my mind was engine oil. Now, where in the world did that come from? <laughs> I am not mechanical at all. Now, you fellows would probably laugh and say, mm, I know what, what happened to her. I thought, well, engine oil. I knew I had to mow the lawn. I wonder if there's an association. <laughs> so I went out to the garage and got the the booklet on the care and feeding of a lawnmower and read that and it says, oh, you should check the engine oil every time you use your lawnmower or at least once a month. And I hadn't checked it since I got the lawnmower. <laughs> so I thought, okay, something here, spirit's telling me something and I had better follow this. So off I went to Osh and bought some engine oil and I came home, put it in the the lawnmower and thought, okay, now we're going to see if this was a message from spirit. So I pulled the lever and got the first round done with the lawn, filled up the grasshopper, and to empty that, I have to turn the engine off. So I emptied the, ho the hopper, put it back on the lawnmower, and thought, aha, now it's going to be the moment of truth. So I took the lever and pulled the lever real hard, and it caught right away, and I thought, oh, wow. So that moment was, thank you, spirit. And off I went as a happy lawnmower. <laughs> I had to mow the lawn again yesterday, and it still worked real good. <laughs> but I thought, now that shows me that I need to open to intuition, because that's how these messages are coming to us. If we're stumbling on growing the seeds in our mind garden, open to that intuition. And it was last week, Reverend Mary Jo was talking about intuition and how her friend, Reverend Jack Holland, kept out of a serious automobile accident with intuition. So this intuition can come to you either in a humorous way or in a serious way. But heed it, because that's God's little direction booklet on how to grow the mind garden. So let's get back to this growth in our mind garden. We have step five. Now this is the most serious, and I would say probably the most important step that we have. And this is the critical step. Know that what you have planted is growing and visualize what it's going to be after its growth. Just as you visualized your garden that you grew tomatoes and you're going to see these big, rich tomatoes, what are you growing in your mind garden? Know that it's already there in the invisible. And as we hold on to this, these nurturing thoughts, these seedlings, gain strength. And it's a gentle reminder that you have to keep your ego out of this. Because the ego can come in sometimes and block it and say, oh, I know better. 
you know, this, this is how we do it here. It's always been done this way, and this is the way it should be done. That may not be God's plan for that. It comes in, the mind seeds are in there. Allow them to grow. Don't let this race mind come in and step on these little tender seedlings that you have. I'll, sometimes to do that, we need to keep these thoughts to ourselves as these seedlings are growing. Because somebody else can look at it from a different perspective. They're not you. They, they don't have the same thoughts, the same thought pattern. They're a different individual. So your thoughts are personal to you. They're very important. And by keeping these thoughts to yourself, while these little seedlings are growing up, you're nurturing them. You're loving them. And once they gain strength, then you can talk about these ideas with other people because you know that nobody's going to persuade you out of a different thought, a different idea, because you've got some real strong seedlings growing in there. Now, just as your, your garden has gotten some stray weeds, so has your mind. Pluck them out. Because as you're working on this and growing your mind garden, you're getting in the habit of a weedless yard. So that you get in the habit of a weedless mind also. But I have a question here. You know, once you pull out the weeds this spring, are these weeds going to stay away forever? Unfortunately not because we have a season here of growth. And every spring, we're going to see the growth of some more weeds. And we go through the same process again. But usually, when you go in and you give it a good, thorough weeding one year, the next year, they don't grow back so much because you've pulled out most of the, the feeder weeds that are there. And this is what we want you to be able to do, is pull out these feeder weeds. And once you've established this habit of monitoring your thoughts, it stays with you. It becomes easier all the time to monitor those thoughts. And all of a sudden, it becomes a habit. And you think, oh, wow. You know, hey, I feel pretty good. I haven't had any negative thoughts in a long time. And when you start thinking about that, you think, oh, but I've had a few negative thoughts, and they come in, and I just say, gone. Be gone thoughts, and they lose their power. So this is how it becomes just so easy and natural to ease into that. And like your garden, it takes work at first. Then you can sit back and enjoy the benefits and the fruits of what you have prepared on that. And I find that going into nature reminds me constantly of this. You know, you go out there and no matter where you are in somebody's yard going through the park, you can see nature at work. And I equate nature with God. To me, I find it it's both comforting and a good metaphor because that lesson is always there. No matter what we do, everything is growing, everything is creating. And this sort of brings me up to the thought. This is usually the Sunday that Lacey talks. And Lacey, I always think of him, his saying that he has, when you're green, you're growing. So I thought, oh, what a perfect statement to finish up because your mind garden is growing green. And that's sort of my little salute there to Lacey, hoping now that his mind garden is growing green also along with ours. 
So when you go out into your yard today, when you even go out into the patio here, look at how nature is emulating your mind garden. And today, I wish that all of you have a very plentiful mind garden with no mind weeds and that you have an excellent harvest. So let that be your way. And namaste.